Hello and welcome to my specialization introduction and outdoor content guide for the Affliction Warlock in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. If you haven't watched the primer video for this series, I recommend you do that now. There'll be a link in the description below and that will kind of get you up to speed on what we're doing in these videos and why. Alright, so we're here on our Affliction Warlock. We've got our action bars all visible and clear. If we hop into our talent tree, these are the talents you can select to fulfill the requirements laid out in the primer video. Uh, and now that we've got all that ready, we're going to jump into our spell book and start sorting out our spells. Now, I won't go really deep into every single one of these spells, but I will give you a brief description so that you can understand why it's being placed into the category that it is. We're going to kick things off with Agony, which is part of our core rotation. Banish allows us to crowd control a demon, aberration, or elemental for 30 seconds. It's kind of limited, but it still goes in our crowd control section. Command Demon is a special skill that changes depending on the demon you have summoned. Uh, so we're going to put that off to the side for now and take a look at it a little bit later. Corruption is part of our core rotation. Create Hellstone will allow us to create these stones. It gives us uh, three charges when we uh, cast this spell, and those stones act as potions that restore 25% of your health. Create Soul Well lets you put a little uh, item down on the ground so that your party and raid members can click on it, and they will get soul stones as well. So we're going to put those over here with our miscellaneous spells. Next up, we have Demonic Gateway. This is a combat utility spell. Uh, it allows you to place a gateway between two locations and so you put one gateway down then when you activate the ability it will teleport you back to the uh, the gateway. Drain life is part of our core rotation. Enslaved demon, we're going to put that over in our miscellaneous. This will let us control a target demon for five minutes. Usually you want to set that up before you start combat and just have an extra demon there uh, for you. Eye of Killrog lets us summon a uh, like an eye demon that is stealthed, has really low hit points, but it's really fast, and you can use it to scout out an area. Fear is a crowd control that will uh, fear an enemy. Health Funnel is a combat utility ability. We can use this to sacrifice some of our own health to restore health to our pet. Ritual of Summoning, this will allow you to create a portal which will uh, then let you summon allies to your location. So that's going to go over in our miscellaneous section. Seed of Corruption is part of our core rotation. Shadow Bolt is part of our core rotation. Shadow Fury is an AoE stun ability that goes in our crowd control. Soul Stone will allow you to store the soul of a target, either yourself or a friendly raid or party member. And when that character dies, they'll be resurrected with 60% health and 20% mana. So that's something you want to set up before combat most of the time. Summon Dark Glare is an offensive cooldown that we can use. It's going to uh, increase... Uh, the damage or the duration of our damage over time abilities and it will also attack the enemy uh, So that'll go in our offensive cooldown section This is our summon demon menu. It lets us uh, summon one of the different demons available. We have four available to us Unending breath is an ability that will let you or an ally breathe underwater and it will increase your swim speed by 20% so uh, this is something you're usually going to have on when you're, you know, traveling from place to place or maybe doing some underwater quests. Uh, so we'll put that over here with the miscellaneous spells as well. And then finally, uh, well not finally, we have Unending Resolve. This is a defensive cooldown. It gives us some damage reduction and immunity to interrupt and silence effects. And then finally, Unstable Affliction is part of our core rotation. Okay, so those are all the spells we have for the Warlock. Let's talk about the resources available to the Affliction Warlock. There are two resources. There's Mana, uh, which you start with an amount of Mana based on the amount of Intellect you have. Uh, and then you will spin that on certain spells and abilities. Uh, this doesn't really factor in too much. It's really hard to be out of Mana or Oom uh, when you're out there in the open world. The more important resource are these purple crystals here that are called soul shards. Uh, you spin soul shards to uh, activate your most powerful abilities. While you're outside of combat, you will regenerate up to three 
soul shards. Uh, and then after that, or while you're in combat, you will need to generate soul shards by casting other abilities. Uh, so that's basically what you're going to do. You're going to spend some mana to cast some spells that hopefully will generate soul shards for you. Then spin those soul shards to do even more devastating attacks. Okay. We're going to talk about the uh, passives for the Affliction Warlock real quick. So we have soul shards, which we just talked about. We have Soul Leech, so all single target that you deal or that your minions deal will grant uh, you and your pet a, sh a shield for 8% of the damage dealt for 15 seconds up to 10% of maximum health, blah, blah, blah. You deal single target damage and you get a shield. Uh, so as your pets deal single target damage, you're all funneling into each other's shields and uh, that is going to give you some increased survivability. And then finally, we have Potent Afflictions. Uh, this will increase the damage of many of your damage over time uh, spells by a certain amount. So, nothing too crazy there. Nothing that's really going to affect your gameplay, and that's why we went over it first. Uh, so now it's time to look at the core rotation for the Affliction uh, Warlock. Now, the Affliction Warlock is all about putting damage over time... Uh, spells and debuffs onto your enemy and then having those sort of passively uh, kill your enemy while you are doing other things. Those other things you may be doing some more single target damage to that one target to kill it faster or you may be switching targets to put more damage over time debuffs on something else and then switching to the next one and basically it's called multi-dotting where you're putting uh, all your damage over time spells on one target, then switching and doing the same thing, switching and doing the same thing. And as you're doing that, the targets that have your damage over time debuffs are dying from the passive damage uh, of those abilities. So you start out with your three soul shards. What you're going to want to do when you open combat is make sure that your uh, opponent has your primary damage over time abilities or debuffs on them. So that's going to be... Agony. This costs 200 mana. It deals a nice amount of damage over 18 seconds, which is a pretty long duration uh, in the outdoor content. So usually you're going to kill your enemy before 18 seconds is up. Um, but you still want to put this on there. And the way Agony works is Agony starts out at a lower amount of damage and every time it deals damage the amount that is dealing increases uh, up to a certain point if you cast agony on the target while they already have agony it will extend the duration uh, without increasing the damage also agony is one of your abilities that can generate soul shards for you and that's the other reason you want to cast this on the enemy uh, as soon as you start combat so that you can start getting uh, those soul shards because it is a chance to sometimes generate a soul shard. It's not a guaranteed thing. So you want as many opportunities as possible to get those soul shards so you can use your powerful abilities on the enemy that you're fighting. The second damage over time ability you want to put onto your target is going to be Corruption. Uh, corruption does damage over 14 seconds, so a little bit shorter than Agony, but it deals consistent damage. There's no ramp up from a low amount to a higher amount, so that's going to deal a lot of damage right up front. Uh, it also just costs 200 mana, uh, so pretty cheap, pretty easy. After that, you're going to have soul shards to spend, and you're going to want to spend them on one of two abilities. So the first ability you could spend them on would be unstable affliction unstable affliction is the uh, spell you're going to want to use against a single target when you cast unstable affliction it costs one of your soul shards it deals a large amount of damage to the target over eight seconds so a nice small amount of time so you get all that damage pretty quickly which is good in the open world uh, and you can cast up to five unstable afflictions on the same target. These are individual damage over time debuffs, so they don't affect one another. You just have more of them. Also, 
If a target is affected by your unstable affliction, you deal 10% more damage to that target, uh, which gives you that extra damage to uh, get that target down as fast as possible. There's an effect when unstable affliction is dispelled that doesn't really apply too much in the open world, but if it is dispelled, it does a bunch of damage to the dispeller and silences them for 4 seconds. Also, if your target dies while the unstable affliction is on them, you will get the soul shard that you spent on unstable affliction refunded to you. Uh, so that's usually going to be the case uh, in outdoor content a lot of the times. Uh, so that will help you to kind of maintain your soul shard so you can keep casting abilities. The second ability you might want to spend soul shards on would be Seed of Corruption. This is the ability you're going to want to use if you're fighting several targets. Uh, what it does, it costs one soul shard. It puts a, they call it a demon seed inside of the enemy. And after 10 seconds, which is fairly long in open world content, uh, that seed will explode, dealing 530 shadow damage to all enemies within 10 yards and applying your corruption debuff to them. So... Uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to do that multi-dotting type thing I was talking about earlier. Also, I said, you know, the 10 seconds is a pretty long time. However, the seed will detonate early if the target's hit by another seed detonation or if the target takes a pretty low amount of damage from your spells. So the way this will work is say you have seed of corruption on a couple different targets one of those seeds explodes that'll cause a chain reaction to all the other seeds and it'll deal a bunch of uh, aoe damage and then all those targets will have corruption on them if you're only fighting a single target then generally what's going to happen is you'll put the seed on which you probably shouldn't be using anyway you should be using unstable affliction but you'll put the seed on them and then you'll pretty quickly hit that damage threshold uh, that'll cause the seed to detonate early and deal its damage uh, outside of that, if you are, you've got your damage over time debuffs on the enemy, uh, you've got your, you know, your seeds of corruption and your unstable affliction, all that stuff is going. You can fill your time with two other abilities. You have Shadow Bolt. This is an ability. It just sends out a shadowy bolt. It deals an okay amount of damage to the target. It does enough damage to make your seed of corruption explode so you can use that to guaranteed trigger that explosion uh, but other than that it's just kind of there to fill space if for some reason you have everything else going the way it's supposed to be and you just need a button to push the other ability we have as part of our core rotation is called drain life and this is a nice kind of defensive ability uh, it costs 600 mana per second but it drains life from the target and heals you for 500% of the damage you do to the target. So it's a nice way to get your health back. Uh, so that's what's going on with the core rotation for the Affliction Warlock. It might sound kind of uh, complicated at first, but it's actually pretty easy. So we're going to go over here and check it out. So first we're going to take a look at Agony. If we put Agony onto the target, you'll see here that every time... It deals damage it, this number here increases and this is not the number of like stacks it's the power level of the ability it caps out at 10 so once it hits 10 it's doing its maximum amount of damage every single time now if we were to cast agony again this would not increase that number but you'll see it will refresh the duration of the debuff so we want to have Agony on our target, and you can see that's helping us to generate our Soul Shard, so we have a full 5 now. The other ability we would want to place on this target would be Corruption. Right, so now we have two of these abilities dealing constant damage. And then, since we're facing a single target here, we would start casting our Unstable Affliction, which I'm going to do, and you're going to see there's going to be several Unstable Afflictions pop up. So we can have up to five of these all at the same time. 
And this is doing a ton of damage. Now, we're not going to get the refund on the soul shards here because the training dummy won't die. But that is a strong possibility in the open world. So we may cast all those unstable afflictions and just get most of those soul shards back so that we can use them on the next target just as easily. Now, let's say we're in a situation where we want to fight both of these uh, training dummies. So what we would want to do is a little bit of multi-dotting. So we'd want to target the first enemy, make sure it has our agony and our corruption, switch to the next enemy, put agony corruption on that, then cast a demon or a seed of corruption on that target, and then switch and cast a seed of corruption on this target. And you'll see that uh, the, those seeds cause the explosion. Now the other thing that you can do here if you want to skip the corruption step altogether is, well wait until corruption comes off, you can put your agony on a target, put your agony on the next target, then put your seed of corruption on, your agony damage should be enough to make it explode, and now this target has corruption, and this target has corruption. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do there. Uh, if you feel like it's worth um, getting the extra damage in from that initial corruption, like let's say you're going to fight, you know, three or four enemies. In that case, you're definitely going to want to, you know, get your, you might even just get your agony, cast your seed of corruption, change targets, and just start putting agony on those targets because your seed's going to explode and give corruption to everybody. Uh, but that's basically what you want to do. Single target, get your agony, get your corruption, and then go ahead and put those unstable afflictions on. And you can just keep casting that until the target dies because you'll get all those soul, uh, a bunch of those soul shards back for the next target. Uh, in a multi-target situation, run up, put your agony on one. You can cast Seed of Corruption right away. Yeah, just at some point you want to cast a Seed of Corruption. And you can't ignore the corruption there. Uh, for me, if it was like two targets, I'd be fine with just agony, corruption, and then agony, corruption, and then put my seed of corruption down. Wait for that to explode. Uh, because the other thing here is when that seed explodes, it refreshes the duration of corruption as well. So you'll get even longer uh, without a longer duration on that corruption without having to recast it again. So it can be worth casting the corruption initially and then the seed of corruption. But if it's like four or five enemies, you're better off just casting the seed so you can get corruption on all those enemies at the same time. Uh, and just as an example, here's a Shadow Bolt. There we go. Just nice single target uh, damage and then drain life is going to pull life from the target and heal you. You can see... Oh, it's not going to show the healing. Sometimes it shows the healing, but it's not going to show it there. So that is the basic rotation for the Affliction Warlock. It's pretty uh, straightforward. And now we're going to jump into the talents and create a build that will work well in outdoor content. So let's see here. All right, this is the build that I recommend you use in outdoor content. Uh, it's not the only one you can use, but it's the one I like, recommend, and will be demonstrating at the end of this video. Uh, so we're going to go through each talent and talk about how it contributes to the build and uh, why we chose it. So first off, Drain Soul. So this is an ability that's going to replace our Shadow Bolt. So our Shadow Bolt, as you remember, was just kind of a boring spell. It did a little bit of single target damage, and that was it. Uh, now with Drain Soul, it cost 200 mana per second. It's now a channeled ability instead of a single cast. And it drains the target soul, uh, causing uh, a decent amount of damage over 4.3 seconds, so a nice short duration. Damage is increased by 100% against enemies below 20% health. And if the target dies while you're casting Drain Soul, this gets you a Soul Shard. So now instead of just having this single target ability that just does a little bit of damage and is kind of boring, we now have this ability that once an enemy gets below 20% health, we can start doing a nice 
a pretty massive amount of damage to them pretty quickly. And if they die while we're doing it, we get a soul shard back. So we have another way to kind of uh, generate soul shards. And this kind of works as an execute for our build. And takes a boring ability and makes it a more interesting one. Next, we have Absolute Corruption. Uh, corruption is now permanent and deals 15% increased damage. Uh, duration is reduced to 24 seconds against players, but that's not what we're worried about. So now you only ever have to cast Corruption on an enemy one time. That means if an enemy gets hit by the Corruption from your C to Corruption, they permanently have Corruption. That means they are going to die no matter what. Uh, that's pretty awesome because it means if you're in a hairy situation, you can focus on defense and trying to keep yourself alive, knowing that you don't have to worry about casting your damage over time debuffs on that enemy again because they have a permanent corruption and they will die. So you can stabilize the situation and then, you know, go back once you're, you've got your health back and stuff like that, you can go back to focusing on killing them off faster. Uh, this helps for, you know, rares or elites and things like that. Uh, where if you might need to run around and, and try to kite them around or something, you could do that. Uh, but all around, it's just a nice kind of quality of life improvement. And it does help you uh, do some kind of tricky stuff out there sometimes. Next, we have Burning Rush. This is a combat utility ability. Uh, what it does is when you activate it, it gives you 50% movement speed. And this will last until you toggle the ability off. But while you have this movement speed increase, it, you will take 4% of your maximum health uh, as damage until you turn it off. So it's a pretty powerful movement buff where you have to sacrifice health uh, in order to get that buff. But the nice thing about the Affliction Warlock is you can always roll into combat and use your Drain Life. And your Drain Life will start to heal you for some of the damage that you're dealing. Uh, and that's one of the ways you can get health back there. Next we have Sow the Seeds. Seed of Corruption now embeds a Demon Seed into one additional nearby enemy. So over here... If we were to come up and cast our Demon Seed, or our Seed of Corruption, you'll see this guy will get it. And he got it as well. So now, we could say, use our Drained Soul, deal some damage, and cause that double explosion. Now they both have a permanent corruption. Hopefully that doesn't affect my ability to uh, show off things outside of combat, but... Uh, yeah, so that just makes it even easier for you to deal with a bunch of targets by putting in those multiple seeds of corruption uh, so that you get extra chain explosions. Next, we have Demonic Circle. This summons a Demonic Circle for 15 minutes. Uh, so we'll put this down here in our combat utility as well. If it'll let me. Okay, it's in our spell book. So here we go. Demonic Circle... Actually, we'll put these over here. And Demonic Circle Teleport. So what this does is the circle we'll put down. We got a circle down here for 15 minutes. Okay. And we can cast Demonic Circle Teleport to teleport back to our portal. All right. So this does have a 40-yard range, uh, but this is useful because you can, you know, let's say that for some reason I was questing and this was some kind of valley that I couldn't really get to. Uh, you know, I wanted to come back up here. I could drop down, go do whatever I'm doing down here. And then I can run back over to this cliff and go, oh, hey, I want to teleport back up. And we can hit our demonic circle teleport. And now we're back up the cliff. So... It gives us a little bit of utility in our mobility and how we can travel around to space and outdoor content. Uh, you just got to make sure that if you, you know, do something like what I just showed an example for there, that the fall isn't greater than 40 yards because then you won't be able to teleport back up. But it gives us a little bit of extra uh, mobility. You can also use this to say, you know, put down a portal here 
and then you could run over here and starting attacking your enemies and if you get into a sticky situation hit teleport you're over here now maybe you have time to heal or you have time to get away or you know it's just a good utility ability next we have shadow embrace uh drain soul which replaced our shadow bolt uh Apply Shadow Embrace, increasing your damage dealt to the target by 3% for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times. So we already know that Drain Soul will deal 100% increased damage to enemies below 20% health. And with Shadow Embrace, we can get up to 9% additional damage to targets that are under that uh, health limit. So this means we can really, really finish off opponents uh, pretty well with that ability. And then finally, Creeping Death, your Agony, Corruption, Siphon Life, and Unstable Affliction deal their full damage 15% faster. Uh, so what this means is that in the open world content, when we're not fighting a raid boss that's going to be alive for, you know, five minutes or something like that, we're really fighting enemies that, you know, only live for a matter of seconds, we're going to front load a bunch of our damage uh, to those initial ticks of that damage over time debuff and this is going to help us kill things a lot faster so uh, that's the build uh, your rotation doesn't really change that much <clears throat> on a single target you still want to cast your agony and your corruption but now your corruption is permanent so you'd never have to refresh it you're going to put out your unstable afflictions and then it, when your target drops below 20% health or pretty close to that, you can cast Drain Soul to deal a bunch of damage to that target, uh, help finish them off before the Unstable Afflictions are gone. That way you can get the Soul Shards back from the Unstable Afflictions and you can get an extra Soul Shard from Drain Soul when the target dies. Uh, on your multiple targets, then you're going to cast your Agony on your primary target. You're going to make sure, in this case, I would go ahead and do Seed of Corruption now because your Corruption is going to be permanent. So cast your Seed of Corruption. That's going to get Corruption onto everything around you. Uh, and then you can also kind of target enemies that are low with Drained Soul to kill them off as well. Okay, so the other thing that's, you know, we're a Warlock, so we get to summon a Demon. Uh, the demon that we have out is going to vary based on situation. Uh, each of our demons gives us a different ability. So we can check these demons out here. So we have four options. We have our imp. And it does cost a soul shard to summon one of these uh, characters. Our demons. So our imp has a fireball. Single target ability. Uh, he can flee. He can uh, remove one harmful magic effect from an ally. He increases the stamina of uh, both us and himself by 5%. And then our command demon ability for uh, the imp is the ability that lets us remove a harmful magic effect from an ally. So the imp is nice if you just want to get some additional single target damage in and this ability here is not super useful in open world content it can be but generally you're not going to be too worried about cleansing yourself of poisons and things like that so uh, you can have the imp out if you want next we have the fell hunter so the fell hunter gives us the ability to spell lock a target which will uh interrupt counter the target spell cast and prevent them from uh casting any spell in that school of magic for six seconds uh it also has a shadow bite that it'll deal and devour magic which will purge a beneficial magic effect from an enemy uh and this will heal the fell hunter and give it 60 energy which is its resource so uh the and spell interruption is a little bit more useful than the imp's ability because if you're fighting a caster or something like that, you can trigger this and that will give you a nice interrupt on your target. Uh, because by default, we don't have a just a simple interrupt as the Affliction Warlock. Uh, we can fear the target, but that makes them run around like crazy and that might um, cause other enemies to come to us that we don't want uh, 
to be dealing with at that time. And we can also use our Shadow Fury, but that's a AoE stun on a one minute cooldown, and that's a lot better to use in a situation where you know we can hit a bunch of targets. Next we have the Succubus. The Succubus gives us the ability to uh, seduce the target and disorient them for 30 seconds. Damage will break the effect and it's only usable against humanoids. Well, we're constantly damaging the enemies with our uh, debuffs, uh, our damage over time spells. And also, if we're in a situation where we're fighting multiple targets, uh, we've got our Seeds of Corruption going off. Uh, generally just not a good ability to have with us. Uh, the Succubus also has a movement speed reduction, um, a Lash of Pain, which does some single target damage, and some lesser invisibility. It's a really good pet for PvP. Uh, however, the pet that I recommend you take on the Affliction Warlock is the Voidwalker. The Voidwalker gives us the ability to uh, temporarily increase the current and maximum health uh, by 30% for 20 seconds. Uh, it also has Consuming Shadows. It'll drain health from all nearby enemies. Uh, suffering, where the Voidwalker will taunt the target. Uh, and then also Threatening Presence. This intimidates any target. The Voidwalker attacks, increasing the threat generation. So, the Voidwalker will tank for you. And that means that you can focus on your damage output, on multi-dotting your targets while he soaks up a bunch of the damage so void walker is the pet that i recommend you take as the affliction warlock okay so now that we've gone over pets we've gone over our talent build we've gone through our spells the last thing to do before we head out into the open world is going to be to look at our pvp talents should you want to toggle on war mode and mainly focus on pve content uh, first off i recommend you take Re relentless this will replace your honorable medallion uh, with an, a passive ability that reduces the duration of all incoming crowd control effects by 20%. This is a nice set it and forget it ability. Just anytime you're going to take some kind of crowd control, a stun, a slow, a, you know, anything like that, it'll be reduced by 20%. Next, Endless Affliction. Your Unstable Affliction deals the same damage as normal, but its duration is increased by 6 seconds. This means that you have a longer amount of time to kill off that target and get refunded all those soul shards. In addition, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of the main uh, perk to that. Generally, you don't want your damage over time abilities to last longer because you want them to deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. But in this case, it is important to get those soul shard refunds uh, because then on your next target, you can immediately start casting your unstable afflictions again. Soul Shatter is a ability on a one minute cooldown. This consumes all your damage over time effects on the five nearest enemies within 40 yards, deals up to 10% of their maximum health and shadow damage, and for each enemy hit by Soul Shatter, you gain one Soul Shard and 10% haste. So what this means is if you've got a bunch of damage over time effects on targets around you, you're fighting a lot of targets, you can hit this, deal a nice burst of damage, generate a bunch of soul shards, start casting those uh, seeds of corruption again and, and outputting more damage that way. And then finally, Rot and Decay. Each time your drain life deals damage, it increases the duration of your unstable affliction, corruption, and agony on the target by one second. So obviously our corruption is permanent, so that's not a big deal. But Unstable Affliction and Agony also get increased by one second. So now, if you're in a situation where you're like, he's almost dead, you can cast Drain Life. Now, usually you want to cast Drain Soul, but let's say you're taking a large amount of damage, you can now use Drain Life, focus on healing yourself and knowing that you're constantly extending the duration of your damage over time debuffs so your target is still going to die. Because a lot of times what will happen is if you have to switch to defensive mode, you're trying to stay alive, your damage over time abilities wear off. And now your enemy is not taking as much damage. And because that's your primary source of damage, uh, you get into this situation where you're trying to defend, but you need to also attack so that your uh, opponent can actually die. 
Uh, but sometimes, you know, taking those couple of seconds to make sure, especially with multiple targets that they all have your debuffs on, is just enough for them to deal too much more damage and then you can't recover from it. So having this ability to be able to drain life from the target, uh, heal yourself, and also extend the duration of your damage over time abilities, ensuring that you're still doing that good damage to them, uh, is really nice. All right, so that is it. Uh, we're going to do two things real quick. First off, uh, we're going to generate some health stones. You always want to have these. They go into your backpack. You can put these onto your bar, either you know in your defensive cooldowns or over here. I'm going to put mine in combat utility. You see we got three charges. They'll restore 25% of our health, so we got our warlock potions. Uh, and then also, we're going to cast Soul Stone on ourselves. This will last for 15 minutes, and if for any reason we should die, you know, we get overwhelmed or whatever, we're able to come back to life with 60% health and 20% mana at the spot where we died, so we don't have to walk back. Uh, and that's really nice. Alright, now that we have that set up, we're going to go out into the open world, check out the build against a couple different types of enemies. So I will cut to that and see you there. Alright, so we're here in Suramar City and we're just going to go down and try out the build against a couple different types of enemies. Make sure we dismount and we've got our Void Lord up. So from way far away, as far as we can, we're going to cast our Agony corruption and then start hitting these unstable afflictions on our target and <laughs> I was gonna say we'll drain soul after that all right so same thing we're gonna agony corruption we could just start draining soul if we wanted to okay I guess the nice thing about the damage over time abilities about casting Agony and Corruption is that uh, you can do them while you're moving because they're instant cast. Now you see we're at four soul shards here and that's because we got refunds from uh, some of our unstable afflictions or we generated one from our drained soul. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about multi-dotting. So we're going to dot each of these three targets here maybe four so what we're going to do is we're going to hit we're going to put agony on each one and then on the last one we're going to put the seed of corruption and our void walker is going to go in there and tank for us in the meantime so we'll go agony 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 and then we will cast our seed of corruption that's going to uh, explode pretty quickly that puts Corruption. We could start casting our Drain Souls on these different targets. And we're at five Soul Shards that we generated from doing that. So that's a good example of how you can uh, multi-dot in a situation like that. Where you know, you're know you able to target each of those individuals pretty easily uh, on their own. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here and we're going to try to grab a few more enemies. Maybe try to make things a little bit more hectic. Uh, so I guess we can get that patrol. Alright, so we're going we're gonna to go down. We're going to tab through, target everybody with our agonies here. Let's get that guy over here. Uh, so we're going to cast our Seed of Corruption. Okay, there we go. And now we can pick out targets and just start casting Drain Soul. If we're getting a little bit low on our health, uh, we can use our Drain Life. If our Void Lord is getting low, we can actually cast Health Funnel on him. That's going to give 25% of our health to our Void Lord. And then we can target this enemy and cast Drain Health and get most of that life back. Okay? So this target, we're going to want to make sure we've got our Agony back up on him. We can start casting some Unstable Afflictions. You know, hit our Drain Soul. He's got a good chunk of health, so we may, may have cast that a little bit early, but that's alright. Alright. Agony, Unstable Affliction. 
got our corruptions on there. And you can see one of the things that's going to happen uh, when you are playing uh, as an Affliction Warlock is a lot of times the damage over time spells you're casting are going to uh, spread. And you're going to end up fighting more enemies uh, than you intended to. So I'm going to funnel some more health into my Void Walker here to help heal him up. And then we will see if we can go get hold of an elite enemy. And just kind of show off how that would work. Oh, we got one right here. Nice. With a couple of uh, adds. So that's good. So we will agony. We'll agony on... Make sure we have agony on all these targets. Uh, all I did was hit tab and run through and hit them all. Then we'll put out our seed of corruption. And remember, that's actually putting out two seeds. One to our primary target and one to another one. Now this guy over here... We're going to fear him because he's just casting spells at us right now. And we're not a big fan of that. So we'll send him away while we focus on killing our other target here. All right, so we're going to health funnel back into our Void Walker. And then we are going to drain life to get our health back. All right, we can keep doing that. We can cast another Seed of Corruption. Spread that around again. Alright. So this one's down. Agony. Start draining soul. This should kill him off. There we go. This one over here. We're going to make sure we've got agony. Corruption. Start draining soul. There we go. And you can see we're ending most of these combats with five full soul shards, which means we could start the next combat doing just about everything that we want to. Go ahead and health funnel back into my Void Walker again. And that's it. Oh, we got another friend, so let's take care of him first. All right. And that's it. That's the build. That's essentially uh, how you're going to play it. Just remember your corruptions are permanent. Uh, remember to change your tactics a little bit based on whether or not you have a single target or multiple targets. Uh, and as you get better at uh, playing through the core rotation of spells, you can start to incorporate like your dark glare or your defensive cooldowns. Maybe change up your talent build a little bit and try something new. So I hope this has given you a good understanding of the Affliction Warlock and given you the confidence to get on your own Affliction Warlock. Go out there and uh, try out the specialization. See if it's something you might want to play in Battle for Azeroth. If you like the video, if you like the guide, hit the thumbs up, you know, subscribe, hit the bell, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, regardless of all that, I really just hope that you have a fun time in Battle for Azeroth and thank you for watching this video.